Born in Northumberland in 1716, 300 years ago, the once and future greatest landscape gardener of all time showed instant promise from the off, adding new features to the landscape of his cot. Unusually for those times, Lancy, as he was then known, didn't leave school till he was 16. Thence to the local squire's veg patch, the regimental layout of which he no doubt heartily disapproved, yet quickly amazing everyone with his ideas and his thirst for knowledge, squirrelling it all away in the labyrinthine libraries of his fantastic mind. After a few calls by some influential contacts, it was time to travel south, and so Lancelot, much like his knighted namesake before him, set off on his own epic quest. Royal favours and decades of war had brought great riches and vast estates. Lancelot could sniff the whiff of wealth, wafting through every great gate he passed. The picture postcards of the day sent back from the grand tours of Europe were inspiring new fashions in gardening. No more the elaborate parterres and tedious topiaries. No, the new must-have was the natural look, bella vistas and earthly paradise. Lance's big break came when Viscount Cobham summoned him to Stowe. Age just 25, he was made head gardener and then clerk of works, developing whole new trends in garden design and making Stowe the most visited estate of that golden age. Brown was on his way, clip-clopping up to modest doorsteps all across the land, becoming famed and named for recognising the capabilities of their estates. Unfurling his proposals before his expectant clients, they oohed and aahed, gasping in awe. Whole hills were levelled to pick out some dreamy spire beyond. Streams rerouted into serpentine rivers and lakes. Whole trees transplanted. An unsightly church taken away here, an entire village there. There was no end to his abilities. He was an architect too, and a phenomenal water engineer creating not just pastoral perfection, but lush farmland and innumerable future lunches. The outrageous upheaval caused by his works all quickly healed through time. Then it was time to show off these living masterpieces and party in them too. The assembled toffs discussing politics and art, the latest twirls and curlicules, canapes in the shaded groves animated by hermits and the cutting-edge theatre of the day. Booting, fishing, shooting. Oh, the jobs piled in. Everyone had to have their slice of brow. Ah, such a man. 250 estates in less than 40 years, while his influence spread far and wide. Across his life, he calmly ascended the social ladder, in through the glass ceiling itself, to dine with dukes and earls and ministers of the realm, nay, even by his end as royal gardener at Hampton Court with the great King George III himself. Three hundred years on, we still gaze upon his views with wonder. And from some nearby hill, like a mythical centaur, he still surely watches o'er his glorious works and breathes. I saw their capabilities and brought them all to life.